What's up comic and pop culture fans? This is James with Midhunter Comics and I have made a list of the collector's journey. This is the typical timeline that a collector will go through from the course of when they start to when they end. You start as a reader, you either inherited some comics or maybe you got some comics from Barnes and Noble and you're hooked. Not required, but you completely forget about comic books. Maybe you get made fun of in school, bullied for liking Batman in middle school, and until you get your first job where you get a taste of uh, money, you put it on pause. It's in the back of your mind. You get that first job. You experience money for the first time. You look at the comic books that you've got and you start to complete the runs around it. You're not focused about keys. You're not focused about CGC or CBCS. You just want to read. You're completely satisfied for now. You learn about the keys and valuable books. You start to educate yourself on recent keys that have been popping up. You start to collect. You start to go to comic book shops and see if you can get your hands on a Venom 3 or perhaps a Spider Geddon Zero. You start small and affordable. We're not even talking slabs yet. You learn about slabs. You learn that you can get comic books encased and graded and it adds value. You go crazy. You try to buy them. Uh, wait, you don't have enough money for that just yet. You learn about variance and ratio variance, and you start to plug your money into those 1 in 25 books. Later on, you come to learn that you've wasted your money, and it's really hard to recoup any of that. Next up, you discover the difference between gimmicky ratio variance and books that might actually hold value. You learn what second or third prints, or maybe error prints, actually hold value versus a gimmicky artificial 1 in 10, 1 in 25 variant. Next, you discover the Copper Age. You are into another level of key hunting. By this point, you've abandoned a favorite character and you're just starting to go for anything that might be within a budget that won't kill your wallet. And then you learn about the Bronze Age. Now you get into some big boy keys, but you can't afford that no way. So you get your toes wet with the low grade is better than no grade mentality and you start to pick up some smaller keys from the Bronze Age at an affordable price. You learn how to trade, and you have probably about five to 10 really bad trades where you don't wind up on top, but in that you learn how to do it right, and you wind up even or coming even on top. You're now five to eight years into the hobby and you've learned how to master a trade. You've learned how to keep money. You've learned what is an actual investable book and you get your first $500 book. You keep feverishly trading those 100, 2, 3, 4, $500 books until you wind up with a $1,000 valued book in your collection. Suddenly you see advertisements for your favorite artist or favorite writer coming into the area and you might want to do some signing. You spiral into the world of signed books and sometimes even getting books remarked. You realize there's some sweet ass displayability and even a little bit of investment opportunity when it comes to signed books. Oh, you got married and you got to learn how to balance. Everything changes. You got to learn how to support kids. You got to learn how to support yourself, your wife or husband. You now can no longer afford to do bad trades or buy things that are for your personal collection and you start thinking about books that might get you actual money. That's when you dive into the silver age, which a lot of people call the investment age. You learn pretty quickly that a 3.5, while almost holding zero value if it were a modern book for Silver Age, is actually pretty good and oftentimes the best you're going to get. You're in the bigger leagues now. You've got some Silver Age keys. You've spent the time in the hobby. You've made yourself knowledgeable. You know what things are and you're ready to move on. And that is when you get your first Daredevil 1. This is the first 
kind of mega key that you can get and you're looking at a few thousand bucks you look at it every day you couldn't be more proud you got your toes wet you've made it you're in the big leagues now you got a daredevil one it's time to reach for that first $5,000 book. You either save up or trade up or work your way through the system to get it, and you've landed your first $5,000 book. At this point, you're now attending cons. You're actively participating in claim sales on eBay and whatnot you end up getting your first $10,000 book. Your palms are sweating, you think your wife's gonna hack your head off. You tell her that it's an investment, which, to be quite honest, it could be. And that's where it culminates into reaching for your first $20,000 valued book. You've learned all about the golden age at this point. You don't mind if books are coverless. You don't mind if they're 1.0. You want that sweet golden age key. You've done it. You've got a golden age, extremely low grade key in your collection. You should be extremely proud. You're financially okay because you've learned how to make the hobby fund itself and you did it the right way. You've spent 15 years to get to this point. You've got awesome silver age, low grade keys in your collection, maybe even a couple mid or high grade. You've got a golden age key as the staple of your collection. Where the heck do you go from here? Prince, now you start collecting wall art. It's time to do a little redecorating. You go to Heritage or other auction houses and you keep an eye on your favorite books that might have art prints or your favorite artist that maybe needs a little extra money and they released their own. You are in the big leagues now. You are spending big, big money. You've got your Silver Age keys. You've got your Golden Age key or maybe at this point keys. You've got your man cave decorated and your humidity is perfectly matched. You have completed your journey. You've gone from $1, $2, $3, $5 bins to $50 books, $100 books, to big Bronze Age books, to big Silver Age books, to Golden Age books, and original art. You are crowned champion of being a comic book hunter, and you might be wondering what's next. Well, at this point, my friends, an interesting phenomenon happens. You resort to being a kid all over again. Maybe you haven't lost that element of being a kid throughout. You go to a comic book shop and you start with the weekly pickups all over again. You get right back into the reading. You've done everything. You've ran to the top of the mountain. You've seen everything you can possibly do. The only place to go is back to the start and you become a fan again. Not focused on keys, not focused on collecting, getting back to the root of it all, what got you into the hobby, which is enjoying these stories. You forget everything you've worked on for the past 20 and 30 years, and you're back in it like a kid, enjoying some awesome comic books. And that, my friends, is the 20-year cycle of a successful comic collector. I should totally make a poster of that. That would be totally awesome. I might actually do that. Don't forget to let the hobby fund itself. This path is doable. You have to manifest it. You can make it happen. It happens to all kinds of people. I'm personally right in the middle of it. I'm in that silver age zone where I've started dabbling into the silver age. I do have a couple books priced around two, three thousand dollars. Let me tell you, this was not overnight. It took over 10 years to get to that point. I project in 10 years, maybe even sooner, I could be one of those dudes that might have a valuable golden age book in their collection. It can happen to you. It happens to all kinds of other people out there. You got to put in the work. You got to learn the hobby. You got to learn how to trade. You got to learn how to sell. You got to learn how to be smart and not fall for the gimmicky stuff. I will see you next video. Keep on hunting.